Uh, thank you once again to Emilio Longo. He interviewed me for six hours um, uh, last week, or what, and this thing would be two weeks ago by now, and uh, for his, uh, a thing that he founded called Skilled Based Art, a learning resource for art students and artist teachers. And all these services, I mean, you know, this is an age of information, and all this information is valuable. Don't ever underestimate, uh, and, 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 and my producer will put that on. I think he's already put it on, okay. Um, but don't ever underestimate the, uh, the importance of direct training with, a, with uh, I really would suggest you, the word is discipling. Uh, you know, the theory out there is all over the place. The uh, actions uh, are so, huh, what's the right word? They're so disconnected uh, from, from what, what, well, let's just say they're so disconnected. <laughs> Uh, from not only the theory itself that people think they're buying into, the theory, the underlying theory, whatever those are in the arts at large, you know, you know, like the very concepts of beauty and those things, or even what impressionism is, these things are so adulterated. The theory, the words all sound the same and the actions are very different from it. So, uh, you know, I myself am part of a continuum and I think that's the most difficult part of, for people who are working today, they're coming out of the, um, uh, so many of the teachers today are coming out uh, originally of a um, uh, uh, illustration, education background, uh, college background, other things like that, and um, um, the uh, it, which wouldn't be so bad if the teachers were all part of this great continuum. But I say continuum, and I'm referring to my connection with Gamble, which is that. Uh, Himself of of having a connection with Paxton, who was connected to the uh, Jerome world and to 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 the other guys, Benson Tarbell uh, and uh, 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 and uh, De Camp, all of whom trained in Europe and were part of the bigger, greater conversation over multiple years. Uh, they, you know. It's, it's not like it's an absolutely universal thing, and yet, you know what, the conversation really is remarkably that, and today's conversation is significantly different. So, um, uh, have in mind that these things are good and useful, and my six-hour interview, which I think is broken up into three nice little segments uh, on there, is uh, one of those things that helps you to get your head around the, uh, you know, the thinking. You could argue the mind of, uh, of, uh, that was generated or uh, 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 communicated by R.H. Ives Gamble. Uh, and I say the mind, I'm not talking about Gamble's mind, I'm talking about this greater mind, you know? And that's that, let that mind be in you. And it really is the mind, the very, def the very definition of aesthetics comes from, you know? Um, but what is that mind? What is the mind of the artist, the great artist, uh, as opposed to the, uh, or even the great painter, might be a better word, what is it? And is it the same thing as what's happening today in the uh, illustration-based world? Um, uh, and what are the great values? What are the great ethics um, of that aesthetic? So it's an interesting, just fantastic question, but you've got to, you, you know, if you actually want to be part of this, you want to be part of it doing the real thing. You don't want to be part of it just having a nice life or getting, getting uh, rich or something like that. You really, don't you, I mean, at the end of the day, would you rather have said, I did, a picture that actually is in the family of the great art historically uh, is valued for, or did I, you know, did I get rich? It reminds me so much when I talk about this of the, um, I, so many present day lawyers, you know, what they call the ambulance chasers and things like that, you know, are you into justice? Is your job to bring justice? Or is your job to get rich? You know, I say the same thing about the medical doctors, you know, are you there, my son the doctor, are you there because it's cool to be a doctor? Or are you there because you're primary driving thing is to make people well. And I'm not saying that most doctors aren't. I think most of them probably are there for that right reason, but boy, mixed motives even are bad. So yeah, how do you, how do you uh, think in this generation where everybody wants to know how you're gonna make a living at this? And, and, and people talk in these self-promoting kinds of ways and that sort of thing, as opposed to telling you to dig deep. I love the basic model that is that a person who does a thing well will do it before kings, that's Proverbs. Solomon's wisdom. Let me get to today's question, and uh, we're getting um, 
in, in, in this one, we're getting to back to something we talked about earlier, but I think we didn't discuss an aspect of it that I think is worthy of our time. And this is where um, Jack is speaking. He says, I visit, I visit art schools, often find myself in a large Northlight studio, but it's being used for activities other than drawing and painting, perhaps a lecture room. Or often the windows are covered or even walled over. It makes me think of stories you mentioned in previous lectures about the various ways in which art schools uh, disposed of their cast collections. Perhaps I'm just nostalgic for a vanished past, but if you have some time, could you talk about this subject in general? Yeah, this subject is a pretty big one. I think where it really pained me was in Boston in recent years, they decided to create a wing that, at, at which on the north side of their buildings in the, at the Museum of Fine Arts. And the wing they created, they put up these massive windows. And you'd think, well, they're onto something now. They finally get that they, can, they need to be showing the Boston School paintings in North Light. <laughs> Not to my surprise at all. They use those windows to light the hallways. Those are hallways. I mean, like, <laughs> the paintings hang under spotlights, under absolutely deforming spotlights all through the entire Boston School wing. I mean, like, how, how, how mad does it get out there? You know, these people don't, never ask painters anymore anything. People who know about North Light aren't asked any of these questions. What's the best way? How do you show a work like that in the closest proximity to... That, and that way that would get into the way it was originally created, in that way that would help you to understand uh, how well the guy even saw, you know. And I've talked about before, you know, the Monet exhibit in Boston that was shown in top light at one point. I think it was Boston. And uh, um, lots of years ago. And I mean, like, uh, like the guy's work was fresh. You know exactly what he was thinking. You recognize the days. You recognize the time of the day. I mean, like, the guy's got eyeballs. The guy's good. And, of course, the beauties that he's drawing forth. You know, you take any of this work and stuff it under uh, uh, light that's minimal in spectrum, you know, that doesn't have the, the massive spectrum of the, uh, of, of the sky, you know, of the day. Uh, and it's not going to do the same thing. And you put artificial lights, of course, on. That's a total disaster. You put spotlights on pictures and you light up areas and the dark other areas. You're, you're changing the designs. And I know that half of the curators, or at least some serious number of them today, couldn't care less. They actually think that's their, that's their chance to be creative. So it's, a, it's a really quite depressing from the point of view of what a museum ought to do. You know? It isn't your opportunity to be creative. It's your opportunity to show the work off to its greatest advantage and give the most uh, 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 articulate information about the nature of that work, the way it was painted, the light it was in, all those things. That's your job. Your job isn't to to have a show. I mean, come on, get real. <laughs> and, I mean, totally, totally irritating what, go, what goes on uh, in the museums. Uh, even more so in schools when they do that, um, when they block off lights. Uh, it was funny, in New York, when the art students, like, we had the worst, we had, we had light, north light, some skylight, sky-ish light, but it didn't matter how north it was, these massive buildings were facing you. <laughs> it was the funniest thing that we were, looking back, I mean, it's the funniest thing that uh, we were trying to paint in that kind of light. <laughs> we were so ignorant at the time. Uh, but the school, you know, survived somehow. I mean, I think typically we would, I know in the evening, of course, you'd go to artificial light, and there's nothing wrong with using artificial light, but, um, but there was something that that reminded me of, too, and I'm trying to bring it back to mind. Um... um I have seen any number of uh, schools today that are teaching what we do, um, as, you know, painting classes, for example, in which the uh, lights are just artificial, totally artificial. And I suppose there's a, some angle in relation to steadiness of light. I mean, the, the, the downside of North Light, it, you know, its upside is the astounding richness of the spectrum, uh, the chromatic way, uh, range and that sort of thing that's available to you. Um, but the uh, downside is that it changes, and uh, there's no question of that. So, but you know, painters throughout history have managed to to work through that, and uh, uh, and still can. You know, if you value all those things I'm talking about, like great color, uh, that's the product of great light. Um, oh, let's see. 
Yeah, the, oh boy, there was a story. Oh, I know what it was. Um, when I was a student uh, with Gamble, I mean, Gamble was located at the Fenway Studios, these beautiful Northlet Studios, you know, big windows too, six by, you know, I would guess 11 feet, 10 feet. And, uh, and uh, before I knew it though, the studio, the, the building had been turned over to, uh, um, had become a cooperative which is, you know, slightly more like a condominium, and uh, there was this desperation to keep all the studio spaces full and all this sort of stuff. And before we knew it, we had person after we, we erased the question on the questionnaire that says, "Do you need North Light?" <laughs> and so, before you knew it, you had photographers in there who were doing just that. They're blocking windows and getting the lights where they wanted them. And uh, I mean, not all the time, but sometimes using some, some day daylight. But or you had painters who do the same thing, who had no need, had never even worked in North Light, had no idea what it was for. And yeah, I suppose you could say that uh, Paul was trying to be exclusionary. You know, anybody educated like I was who actually knew the value of North Light. Um, but um, yeah, so you filled the place up eventually over time with even people like architects. I mean, like, oh, that's great, wonderful, isn't that good? <laughs> uh, I, architects really need North Light, but I'm kidding about that. Yeah, you know, it's bitter sarcasm, I guess you would argue, obviously, or irony. But I'm with you, Jack, and that I think you. Um, you know, not, not just nostalgic for a vanished past. There's a, uh, a left-oriented phrase that Solzhenitsyn reminds us of, and he says there's a, Russian, there's a Russian saying that is, forget the past and lose an eye, dwell on the past and lose both eyes. Um, uh, I'm sorry, did I say that wrong? Uh, sorry, dwell on the past and lose an eye, forget the past and lose both eyes. I said it backwards. And... The, um, the era we're in right now is basically sort of seems to be built around the idea that everything's just getting better and better. It reminds me of the Candide story, you know. <laughs> everything's wonderful in this best of all possible worlds and only just getting better. And uh, it just isn't true. And uh, so don't be apologetic. I mean, it's just a question of values. I mean, uh, and what you value and um, why. I mean, don't do it for nostalgia, for nostalgia's sake, but research the reasons. There's no point in living in the past when there are better things. I mean, one of the funny things about this generation is the uh, most of the painters are living in the past. They refuse to come up to what Monet taught us. And uh, they just live in the times before that. I mean, I'm talking about the new realist movement, which is all this academic stuff, which is, you know, it's nothing sinful about it. It's just that it's like, you know, guys, you want the rest of the information or you want to live in the past. So I think that's a mistake, actually. I mean, I know that's a mistake. And, uh, and so do most people uh, on some level working in it, or those people, for example, those guys, a lot of these new schools are coming out of the lack background, which I suggest to you is a, the lack background is more thoroughly a Gamel academic background. Gamel's goal, of course, was to teach academics, was to bring back academic knowledge and make, student, and make it available to students. And, but his job was, his, he didn't consider, consider even though he, he gives lip service to the Boston School, he wasn't a Boston School painter. And, and he, and he uh, didn't bring that back. He sort of, in fact, says just enough sort of negatively about the intellects, for example, of the Boston painters that you, you, it puts you, if you're slightly even elitist or uh, in the camp of wanting to rather dismiss them. Uh, I felt that way at the time I was studying with them and I felt, uh, and, I, and, I, and I, by the way, at the time I was studying with them, I had, I had no particular inclination to do anything except paint imaginative paintings. But, but once, you, once I realized the basis of my studies that had to be first a solid knowledge, can I, can I articulate truthfully exactly what's in front of me with authority and with power and with all the beauty it actually has, or can't I? And the more I looked, the more I did it, and the more I did it, the more I did it, the more I found out where the music really lies in painting. And that's when this divergence from Gamel happened for me. But, um, but significantly part of this stuff is an appreciation for the spectrum itself of nature, the light out there. And, you know, I'd love it. That I know the lights have become more full spectrum. They call it full spectrum, but this marketing says a lot of things. Um, but full spectrum, full... Uh, um, at, the, at, the, at, the, at the great range of the lumens, at the, at the, at the incredible power that nature comes in, you know. I'd, I'd love to see a, a modern light go through a... And maybe it will go through one of those um, uh, triangular glasses, what they call a prism and come out with the same color on the other side. I, I've never looked at them, but I'd like to see that. I'm sure that's whether they should test them if they're not. And to the extent that they're actually succeeding at it, I mean, I, I'm, I'm thrilled and excited. Uh, but the North Light is significantly about that, 
you know, it was, you know, versus West or East or South Light is definitely the most um, unchangeable. I mean, if you paint West Light in the morning, you have something that's relatively, it's, you know, less changeable, but, uh, or the other way around with the East Light. So that's enough of that, I think. But no, uh, keep on valuing, looking at the past, studying it, thinking it through, and, and questioning the present, and, uh, and, 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 uh, and valuing the, the new things in the present that are that are valid, right? So that's just my perception. It's not one of those things that I'm going to tell you a whole lot about. Some beautiful thing that's going to change your painting today. So, thank you for the question, Jack. Um, and I'd say stay the course. Uh, keep looking for why, why, why. If there are good reasons, do it. If they're bad, if the good reason, if the reasons aren't good, don't don't do it. Uh, and don't just hang on to something because it's coming from the past. But I found that the longer you, the more you think it through and work it through and all that sort of thing, the more you value some of these things that we don't frankly fully understand right now uh, in the way the education has worked. As I say, coming out of the sort of the world of illustration as we are now. And the camera, you know, and that's a whole other wild discussion. All right, so do um, um, take a look at uh, Emilio Longo's website and do uh, actually... Um, uh, Comment, share, subscribe, uh, like, do all those things and do them uh, like party on, do a bunch of it, would you? If you like what I'm talking about and if, you, uh, if you're getting it. And thank you very much for being there.